rolling. Combat ones fit inside there. Yeah, I have the combat ones. They fit inside my uh, tab pants. Yeah. They fit inside LB LBX pants. So there's yeah. no reason to have the cry mod, really. The cry you... mod is for the hard shell. Yeah, the hard shell fits in the alpha oh. phase. Yeah. Well, I think they probably... Okay, I use the soft shell ones for my tads, so I don't know. I didn't want to buy the Alpha A's. I wanted to buy the Alpha U's. They're less expensive. They didn't have them in 32, 34. Medium long. Yeah, but I'm still disappointed that he didn't tell... Beyond so so Matt, Matt apparently size, just yeah. ordered his first... What? They oh. do have They do have large sizes. I was talking to... Yeah. to, to big Russian sizes. Yeah, maybe big Russian sizes. Sweet. Um, Dave from, from Airsoft Obsessed, this is how they come down. This is... Uh, Forced my way on the show. The yeah, other half <laughs> of the creative <laughs> giant that Airsoft Obsessed is, you guys have probably seen... Tom on here more than enough times and annoy the living. Well, I was going to say, you probably have seen Dave's photos featured oh. in a huge variety of Airsoft publications. Uh, he's a very talented photographer and one hell of an Airsofter. So uh, I'm extremely happy that you were able to make it down and, and film with us. So. Well, thank you for having me, even if it was against your will. No, right, guys. About <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like my dad. Like he'd be like, "Hey, son, I'm gonna be on your show." <laughs> Off camera, he's just like, "Say what I want you to say, I will beat you." <laughs> uh, so you know how we uh, we were talking briefly. I always want to touch on this point. So apparently, Beyond Clothing was having a sale, a thirty percent off sale, and Matt decided to buy some. Uh, uh, a Alpha A. Or, I grew out of my woodland. Yeah. Set. So apparently he did this and didn't say, "Hey George, they're actually having a thirty percent off sale." Because if they would have, I might have bought a set. I'm sorry. It hadn't occurred to me. He was keeping it. All I didn't himself. even actually. I didn't even realize until I called uh, their sales rep to find out if they had my size because their their site is going under construction. Mm -hmm. And she referenced the thirty percent off, and I was like, I didn't see that on the website. And she said, Yeah, it's right in the top banner. It's literally. Like twelve pixels wide. I'm gonna look at their site later. Probably not. Probably too late. It's Sorry. okay. Uh, I, I think if you call them, just blame blame me, and they might they might. I, it doesn't matter. Won't. It's all good. Like I mean, I'm just trying to be uh, a cool kid. But uh, you know how it is here on Insert. Um, we pick pe uh, questions out of this wonderful helmet, and we will try to answer them in the most unqualified way possible. Very um, opinionated. Our way. our guests will go first. Sweet. Are your answers well, going to be... It. You've seen the show. Yeah, he knows. Good. Did you see the one that, that went up last week for April Fool's Day? It was great. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. That was like your best rated show, wasn't it? Yeah, I think Chris, it was. It had Chris Cost on there, man. So yeah, jealous. that's right. <laughs> I wanted to meet that guy. Yeah, it turned out for what? It was super awkward. Like, we were just sitting here. He didn't want to answer any questions. He just kept reading them and then throwing them away. It's like OPSEC. Yeah, and then he started doing this thing where he would like walk okay, up to the camera and lay down. <laughs> like, dude, what are you doing? This is insert. He's go like, check out last week. <laughs> go check out last week's episode of Insert. All right, go ahead. All right, this is from Hannibal Lecter Smith. I added the Lecter part. <laughs> oh, Hannibal Smith. He's asked questions before. Yeah, he yes. answers a lot of questions too. Oh, cool. Spray painting your airsoft guns. Who does it? And if so, what cans do you use? I have mm. been guilty of spray painting my own guns. A few times. Um, on purpose or on accident? On purpose. The The results have been mixed. Um, I actually did a video on how to paint your helmet um, using burlap and just like, what is it, Rust-Oleum, Krylon that you mm -hmm. get yeah, at Home Depot. Krylon is pretty good. Um, I don't know. I mean, I actually prefer it when somebody else does it for me. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, make me a sandwich. Sandwich that somebody else makes is always better than the one that you make yourself. Mm. Unless it's Subway, in which case I want to go behind the counter and make the sandwich myself. Because I swear these people have never made sandwiches before. <laughs> but they're sandwich artists. Like back, how back, dare you? Back in the day, how dare you insult the sandwich? Back in artists. the day, our local Subway, they would always lay the triangle cheeses in the same direction. And I asked the woman who was making the sandwich, I said, "Can you tessellate my cheese, please?" And she looked at me like I was insane. <laughs> She's like, I don't even know what that means. So I said, look, just take the, cut, the, the triangles and put them opposite so I get an even amount of cheese everywhere. Uh, is that so much to ask? Apparently it is. I mean, uh, Matt's, I don't know, you're a pretty picky eater sometimes. No, I just have like, things. I think I've had sandwich. spit in my food because of your orders because I've been at the same table with you. <laughs> I hope not. Probably. Um, painting, painting. Painting, sorry. Uh, I've done it once or twice. I don't really like to do it anymore. Kind of... Uh, I know people who do shades loves that doing that wrecking ball or Miguel does that mm -hmm, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, other people I don't really do it because if I ever want to sell that gun down the line, I yeah, don't it makes want it. Tough. I don't. 
Plus, I mean, you see my gun, it has the engravings on it, so I don't want to ruin my engravings that I've made. Well, I've got a little bit of insight into spray painting things that actually kind of answers that that issue. Um, I my on my M twenty seven, I have painted certain elements of it, um, and rather than go out and get your standard Rust Oleum or Krylon spray paint that's a permanent fixture, um, there's a there's a spray paint by a company uh, called Performix called Plasti Dip. Um, Plasti Dip's been used for years in different industries to rubber coat uh, the handles of tools, um, and they have a spray paint, and it used to only come in like black and, and white. Uh, but recently they started making camo colors. They make a tan, a brown, and an OD green. Um, so I use a combination of the brown and tan to paint my scope, uh, because I always wanted the ability to go back. The great thing about Plasti Dip is you can always peel it back off, because it's a rubberized latex paint. So that way you could spray paint your airsoft gun or any accessory that you have, and if you get tired of it, you want to change it up, you want to go to a different color scheme, you can just peel that off um, and start over, which is kind of cool. So is it pretty thick then? Um, you just keep adding coats and it just kind of builds. Hmm. One coat usually won't do it. I usually uh, stick to the rule of thumb about four to six coats. Um, and it, even then at four to six coats, it's not like really thick, uh, but it's enough that it's, it's pretty durable. Hmm. Interesting. And in the that. in the case that you can't get it back off easily, little WD forty uh, reliquifies it, and you just wipe it off. I just Boom. learned. Oh, look at this! All, all this knowledge we just gained. The <laughs> mind is blown. Mm -hmm. Good job, Matt. That was a good answer. Thanks. <clears throat> Thomas Rogers asked, "Dear insert, which is better looking awesome? What is better, looking awesome or being combat effective? Looking awesome." Oh. Totally. It's all about the LARP rating. <laughs> it's all about the LARP rating. See? LARP rater. How an what an appropriate shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely kidding, of course. I think that being effective is more important. If you want to enjoy yourself. Some people, you have to remember, some people enjoy it because of the uh, impressionism. So True. So if those people enjoy looking awesome, then and they aren't good at airsoft, that's fine, right? I feel like it's one of those situations where can't, can it, you, cannot you have your cake and eat it too? Of course can't you can. Can't you look cool and also be effective? Yeah, you could look like Matt, and you can eat it too, because Matt is really good. I'm, is that, I think that was sarcasm. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Matt is a very good airsoft. No, you are a good airsofter. I'm a speed softer. I think, uh, yes, I know. I'm a horrible, I'm a horrible Milson player. How are you a horrible? How, what makes a good as Milson you player? as you know? I don't work well with others groups and yeah, teams I know. of people. So that's why you and Jet lone are so, like, as you together. know <laughs> doesn't work. That's why you and Jet are bonded at the hip. No, but we rolled some pretty good yeah. missions at Fated Giant. That's true. Well, Fated we, Giant was my best Milsim performance thus far. You were rolling with you guys. I actually did. Yeah, because we went and got the, the computer hookup with mm -hmm, the AOL mm -hmm. dial-up sound for like 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, are we, are we good yet? He's like, no, 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 these stairs are on 56K. Uh, we got to wait. And I missed that up. I was at a beach in Maui. Oh, shucks. <laughs> oh, darn. <Yeah. laughs> it's like, <laughs> tough thing to miss, yeah. huh? Like, hey, Bo, I won't be able to make it to a faded giant. Why? I'll be in Maui. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's... A, that's Easy trade off. Yeah. Your but so, how about for you? I mean, I know like a lot of your gear is. is um. Yeah, yeah. All kidding aside, I mean. <laughs> sorry. Kid. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> sorry. Bad. But uh, I, I, I really do go for the the function of the whole thing. I do try to you know look the part, but you know being a bigger guy, I know surprise, right? Uh, I am forced a lot of times to buy some of the the more legit gear because repro stuff just isn't made in my size, and um, you know I've got. A 6094 and I've got a cry AVS and wow yeah <laughs> I'm jealous a little uh shoot weddings on the side dude it pays for stuff hey what just the heck saying. you got a good play carrier I'm no I'm just saying oh. cry okay okay I'm sorry yeah jeez I'm, it's not like Shots I don't I love my play carrier no you apparently he has no, a you know, play carrier it's made okay. by somebody uh, else I'll tell, I'll tell I love dude. my play carrier what, no. I'm just saying oh, cry I, stuff it's okay go buy cry dude give me that back and I'll no <laughs> what <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, like, you know, some of the the repro stuff, I mean, it's really cool, but then I put it on, and it looks like, you know, the fat guy wearing the lobster bib at an all-you-can-eat place. Right. Hmm. So, um, no, I, I totally, you know, like I said, I usually go for the stuff that works uh, just because, you know, I don't know. I could care less how I look, honestly. Well, one of the added benefits of, of running 
you know, real gear is it tends to be a little bit more durable too. So mm -hmm. you don't have to buy his gear as often, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just like buying a gun sometimes. All right, Sweden Airsoft asks, when you guys aiming, do you close the right eye or have it open? Uh, I'm assuming this guy must be a lefty because he's probably shooting with his dominant eye, which is his left, so does he close his right eye? Do you guys close your non-dominant eye when you aim? No. You don't? Ever. Okay. How about you? I, I close my eyes. Oh, <laughs> just completely. I play hockey like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. No, I, I, I shoot with both eyes open. Airsoft and real steel. That's what you're supposed to do. I need to get better at that. I do find myself closing my non-dominant eye. I think if you're looking through a scope and if you're trying to make something out, right, very, mm. like really make something out, you can close your eye. But um, usually you have both eyes open. Okay. That's how you're taught to shoot. Well, that's how I also we... am supposed to be using my red dot correctly, and it's usually up here. <laughs> so... Do you, have a, do you have a third Rubio. eyeball in your forehead right there that <laughs> I don't know well, about? Yeah, because I'm up here like this. Speed's up. Yeah, but this trigger finger doesn't do anything. He's got to get the tank no... up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what's funny is when we both played paintball before in our past, you, yeah. you never played paintball. I didn't play paintball. And yet I adopted it's kind of a very right. paintball it's kind of, style of shooting. kind of a little bit of a <clears throat> irony there. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, go. Come on. Good question. All right, let's see. There's what some good questions here. left. I hope. Simon DePew. DePew, Pew. Long question. ACU camo or nah? <laughs> or nah. <laughs> nah. Or nah. Uh, ACU nah. is being, like, discontinued. Big nah. No. Nah. It was never right in the first place. Did you ever have... Oh, hold on. Who here has actually legitimately owned ACU for a specific purpose? I have not. I borrowed a set the one time I wore it. And the only reason we wore it is because it was a John Liu event at War of Angels, and they had a team that was ACU, and no one signed up for it. Oh, wow. wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you had... You had um, I, I, it's, was it full kit with the Mitch and everything? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been playing a while. Yeah. I can tell I'm a little bit older than probably the average airsofter. Uh, I know, surprise again there. I figured you just brushed that in to look more experienced. Yeah, you know, that's actually, some people have asked me, why do I dye my hair up there? And I'm like, really? <laughs> like, who the heck would want to dye their hair to look like a skunk? That's the that's the trend now. Not the skunk thing, but, like, that's the adding a little gray makes you, you know. Yeah, See, well. I, I have touch of gray going right now. Well, back to the, the, the okay. question. <laughs> um, I've been playing a long time, so I was in the sport when ACU first came, like, onto the scene. And the airsoft team that I was on, you know, we had to be cutting edge, so we were like probably one of the first teams in Northern California to to rock the ACU, and boy, we rocked it. And yeah, do you still have it? I do. Would you ever wear it again? Halloween, sure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, or if I need to blend in with a couch somewhere. Well, that's me, all it's let good me ask for. You this. Did you ever find that it was effective at all? Uh, honestly, no. Yeah. I mean, it was horrible. Uh, the best stuff I've ever used, I think, is multicam. I mean, that seems to blend in everywhere. But, I mean, dude, we're playing airsoft. I mean, you know. You stand behind a bush and I'm not going to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what some, some people forget is airsoft distances are a lot more than, uh, or a lot closer than uh, real engagement. Yeah, most what real blends with plywood? <laughs> True. <laughs> I don't know. I think somebody should go invent a camo that is just plywood out <laughs> Or one of those guys that makes like a transformer box, so he's actually wearing like plywood, <laughs> and then like unfolds and takes people. Down. That is, wow, Matt, mm -hmm. you did that. You went there. <clears throat> we have Trevor Slack. Dear insert, what is the most affordable non-U.S. camo? This would be a good question for you, but I don't know if that's affordable. Uh, not affordable. Uh, he's referring to the uh, the Russian camo that I used at Road to Rostov, but my God, that was not cheap. How much? Uh, I mean, I, in the price range, you don't, if you don't want to list it for, are we I, talking cry prices? We're talking like LBX um, prices. We, we, we had to order it. Uh, actually, a, a good friend of mine, Ross, who has a twin brother who was a ranger. Just kidding, Ross. Um, he actually ordered it for me from Russia, and it. Uh, with shipping and everything was just over 200 bucks for a whole set for a set of yeah That's BDUs not that, that honestly I mean it's it you buy it if it was stateside it'd be like ACU stuff that you get at the surplus store for like 40 bucks but wow um, I have found in the limited research that I've done that 
the foreign camos are like super expensive. Yeah, my M90 was up there. My M90 was higher than that. But I was lucky enough to not have to pay for the shirt. Got the shirt for free. Some people out there are very nice when you meet people. I, at one point, was trying to find IRPAT, but apparently the only way you can get IRPAT is if you're in the military and so they don't have a consumer, market. civilian consumer market at all. Yeah. So finding it was very tough. I never was able to build a set. I imagine. And, you know, being in uh, some, uh, whatever the brick camo is, I don't think would work, right? That's not the same. No. Is that no. the stuff that was in Sherlock Holmes where he had the jumpsuit and was painted? Bricks? Yes. That's, that's <laughs> British key, yeah. Where he was hanging up. Coming to Brick Kid. <laughs> wow. We're going back to, to uh, was it Red Storm West when we were at that juvenile corrections facility? All the buildings are brick. Yeah. You walk by, was that a guy? <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see me. <laughs> it's like, you know, he's just got the face paint and you just see his lips move. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Gas Attack Airsoft asks, Hey, insert, how many people are able to get a box of awesomeness and how many are sold at once? If we told you, we'd lose it's them. already too late. Because <laughs> they go up for sale and sell out in about five minutes. Not even that, dude. Yeah. More like two minutes and they cr sometimes used to crash our server. <laughs> but the whole point behind the, the box of awesomeness is uh, it's supposed to be random. Uh, if we you know warned you, then it wouldn't be fair to everybody because... If you know someone wasn't able to check online to see that it had been released, so we release them randomly. We release a random number uh, and at a different price every time to make sure that everybody has an equal and fair chance of, of getting one. If you don't get one, there's always another opportunity. There's this cool script you can get for like Chrome that'll do an auto refresh, and you can set it to whatever you. I use this for for uh, other websites that are very timely release sensitive. Huh. Yeah, so what it'll do is it'll keep refreshing, so you like throw it on your second monitor and just let it refresh and refresh, and when it's up, you just go buy and you can go through it. So I use it to make, that's how I get a lot of the stuff I'm trying to get from PDW. Nice. Because it sells out like, cool story, huh? Evic Hacks by George. Yeah. It's solid. It's amazing the, what you can do with, It's amazing hacks. what you could do with the Google. With the Google. The Google. <laughs> with the Google. Uh, we got good time. All right. Gopher Thomas asks, hey, insert, I'm participating in a 24-hour game. What is essential gear uh, I will need besides my eye pro and guns? Night vision. <laughs> Some Bro, the two guys routines. who actually have <laughs> night vision. Yep. We're in the club. Yep. Not squad. <laughs> that's cool. Um, wow. That's um, a lot of stuff. Let's see. Depending on where your game is, I'm definitely going to recommend some extra socks. Uh, we just did Milsim West's Road to Rostov about a month ago, which was an awesome event. And uh, the one thing that I wish that I had Saturday night was a fresh pair of socks. You didn't bring extra socks with you? No. I brought a camera, though. That's a did you, totally... Did you, did you try, <laughs> did you try <laughs> trading your camera for socks? I, you know, I probably could have. I don't know. Maybe not. It would probably cost me two cameras. But uh, socks for sure. Food for sure. Um, I'd actually bring like an extra set of clothes depending on where it is because like at Road to Rostov it got pretty like right. wet out there yeah. and uh, it's nothing you want more afterwards than to change into some yeah, shorts and some flip flops for sure maybe bug spray too bug sprays depending on where you're playing is very important uh, flashlight if you plan on doing any type of night game or walking around or walking around uh, if you actually are going to do a night game I recommend clear lenses uh, yes. if you only have smoked colored uh, don't do that at night um, if you remember Broken Home did you play the first night game of Broken no, no, Home it with, was, uh, uh, it was with the airsoft camp when I was the VIP and I only had tinted lenses I spent the entire game blind and I had to be <laughs> led by one of my teammates uh, you made for a very interesting game. Yeah. Very interesting game. So yeah, he led so, me right through a uh, whole uh, gully <clears throat> of stinging metal. It was awesome. Tick collars. Tick collars. <laughs> Tick collars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're going to broken home soon. You excited? Yeah. Love ticks. Do you really? Do you, would <laughs> you say that you have a good relationship? No. No, we don't. <laughs> well, I think that's our last episode. Uh, we're going to uh, get back to our normally regular scheduled programming, as we like to call it. Uh, last week was a joke. It was April Fool's. It was funny, or at least we thought it was funny. That wasn't legit? No, it was an inflatable doll we painted to look like Chris Costa. Well, 
did you even watch the episode, Matt? Nope. Exactly <laughs> what I thought. <laughs> I'm like, he's making stuff up. <laughs> uh, so we'll see you guys next week. And check out Airsoft Obsessed, Dave. That'd be uh, cool. What's you your, I'll put all your Facebook stuff in the comments. Below. And Instagram. That's IG. where you can see his his uploads the fastest. You can check out his gameplay videos, too. He has some pretty good gameplay videos. It's all really weird, though, because he's yelling in Russian the whole time, and he's <laughs> really tall. So, like, you see the you know everything at this different level <laughs> than what you're used it's to. It's like that third person down on everyone else. Like, how is this guy standing on a roof the whole game? I don't know. <laughs> He's just like, hey, you need a boost? All right. <laughs> he just picks him up and sits I just him imagine up. Ross is like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not nice. Oh, we love you, Ross. Yep. Sorry, you gotta bro. Come, you got to come down here, too, sometime, Ross. We'll do the Airsoft Obsessed fan. Uh, we'll bring you, Rob, Tom. All you guys can be on the... Ooh. The, That'll be the driest episode. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> it was like that one, that giant episode we did with everybody filed in here. Yeah. We just kept making fun of Jet. Yeah. Good times. Always a good time making fun of Jet. It's too easy. <laughs>